Hello, this is Andre O'Brien from Inocule Vision and Design, and this is the Motion Capture Assistant for Poser 9 and Poser Pro 2012 Tutorial Video 2. Let's get to it. Uh, our first step is to start the, uh, let's, let me close that out and start it again for you guys, is to start the Oskeleton server. Dot exe, and we're going to use the F command to uh, filter out any as, as much of the noise as possible. We're going to minimize that. Now we can go to scripts, uh, Anakali Vision and Design, and Motion Capture Assistant Proposer, and we're going to dock that to our um, user interface to try to maximize the amount of room we have here. Notice I have set it, this file up with uh, 1,000 uh, frames. We're going to take Andy, we're going to go to the parameter um, palette, and we're going to set Andy to invisible. Um, just for the sake of seeing this happen in real, in, um, in real time, we're going to use OpenNI's user tracker application, and we're going to set that, and we're also going to, okay, we see that that's there. Um, I'm going to stand in front of it so you can see it in real time. Hello, 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 hello. All right, that's just to show you that I'm actually doing this in real time. And now we're gonna, let's minimize that. We're gonna make our objects and we're going to start our server. Okay, so we're gonna set that up just right there. And we're gonna move our camera over just a little bit so you can actually see me in action. And I'm gonna do a couple of uh, frames of animation. Okay, I'm gonna close out that. We're gonna start our server. Uh, we're going to, okay, so we got all we out here. We are going to set the MCA point cloud uh, uh, reference point or reference square. You can see this just allows me to move this around. And we're gonna set that to invisible just so we can see the animation play back. And it looks like it captured everything pretty good. Just fooling around, a little kick there. Okay, you see that the arm kind of goes down as it gets occluded. Okay. Just a little something, nothing major. Okay, just to show that, you know, I can go. And then we're done. Okay, so we are going to go all the way out to. Let's go to about here. It's about 800 frames. And we can close that out. Very good. Uh, let's close this. Now, in order to do uh, separate frames, what you can do is you can go to the, the takes. Now, I already created a takes folder. And what we can do is we can just save this scene. It's a new feature in Poser 9 and Poser 2012. We're gonna name it Take One, where you can actually save takes. I think it's a very exciting addition. You can actually save entire scenes. So that's how we're gonna save our takes. As you can see, that's uh, one. So if I were to delete this, and let's say I wanted to start over again with a new animation, I'd start the server over, jump in front of uh, the connect camera and Oh, another thing I need to do is I need to set the frames back to, say, a thousand. And get in front of the camera. Let's go. Okay, we stopped the server. And now we have another take. 
a much shorter take. Say we want to stop here. We set this to 266. And then we go to our library and we add this scene. We'll name it take two. Okay, so now we have separate takes. So even if we were to restart, uh, and let's say we wanted to make Andy invisible again, we could bring in that take, the first take, and better, sorry, we want to bring it in. We don't want to uh, add a new one. We're going to load that same take, and there you have it. Keep in mind that the MCA point cloud is still there. Okay. Very good. I think this was 800, but it doesn't matter. We'll just start from there. All right. So our next task is to uh, make Andy visible again. And we're going to set the display to the figure style display for Andy. We're going to set him to wireframe. We're also going to use the posing camera. Okay, now before we move anything, we want to set our animation. You notice how the point cloud kind of adjusts and settles at around frame, like this. We can go to all the way to frame 20 if we wanted to. Um, so we want to make sure that this set, this the point cloud settles on frame one. So let's go to frame 20 or whatever frame you believe that the, the cloud settles on and open up the animation palette. We're going to scroll all the way down to where the body um, head and the body foot feet are. This is the point for the body head. We are going to highlight at frame 19 all the frames. Now, mind you, on the Windows um, computer, I'm left clicking and holding the left click down. And all right, so I, I hold the left excuse me, I hold the left mouse button down and drag and I drag it all the way to frame one and I hit the delete keyframes button As a matter of fact let's go to 19 and delete that one now I'm going to highlight all the frames on 20 release I'm going to click and hold the left button down again and I'm going to drag those frames to frame one now you'll see as we take the scrubber back to frame one that now the end now the uh the point cloud is settled on frame one which is what we want now we're going to come over here to the parameters um, um palette and we are going to select point cloud and we are going to drag point cloud over to andy and we're going to line this point cloud up with andy as best we can you don't have to worry about being exact but you definitely want to get some good ballpark um, side okay we're not going to worry about the head too much because as you can see the head is actually behind the figure but we're not worried about the head too much because we're not even going to use the head with the animation the head isn't, isn't really tracked it's there but it's not genuinely tracked so we're not going to worry about it too much okay uh, this looks pretty good maybe I could drop it down a little bit more and this looks pretty good to me Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the the points not ex uh, matching up exactly. What's most important are the shoulders, and as you can see, it's kind of tilting over a little bit. The shoulders. Don't worry about that too much. Okay, it'll all align when we're done. Now our next step is to create the hip. We do have the the right hip and the left hip, but we want to create a new point. For the new hip and this new hip we're going to use to orient the entire body of andy so we're going to select andy uh why are there two andys are there two andys in the scene i didn't mean for there to be two andys so let's delete andy two now we're working with andy one okay what the original Andy. okay so we're going to parent Oh, what just happened there is apparently I must have saved this scene with two Andys in it. 
So all I did was delete one. It's not, it didn't hurt anything yet because we haven't connected the point cloud to Andy just yet. So that's fine. Make sure you only have one character in the scene. It just saves, it just uh, makes life a lot easier. Okay. So now we're going to go to the figure. Uh, oh, we want to also take the kinematics off for Andy. Forgot about that. Now we're going to go to figure and set parent. And we're going to set Andy's parent to the hit new that we just created. What this does, as we run through the animation, it orients Andy to that hit. Okay. Our next step is to click on the body keyframes. And you'll see that the scrubber rushes all the way to uh, the end of the animation. We scrub that back. Now we can unparent Andy from the new hip, and we can parent it back to the universe. Okay, very good. Our next step is to associate each body part with one of the points in this point cloud. Now, one thing to note is we see here that we have um, our, el our elbow over here, just the right elbow. Um, since we're using mirror mode, and mirror mode is the standard mode for the um, oh, skeleton, um, the left shoulder and the left side of the body will coincide with the right side of the point cloud. So the same thing for the, the other side. If we click on the left knee, that coincides with the right thigh. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind as you're connecting um, the body parts with the point cloud. We're going to select the, the current figure in the scene, which is Andy. Okay, once that happens, that populates each of these drop-down menus with all of um, Andy's body parts, all of uh, the all of the actors that are attached to Andy's figure. So we're going to select the head, the head of Andy to coincide with this head um, point. The chest is actually the neck point, um, but I, I feel that it was necessary to say chest because I actually want you to align your figure's chest with that point, not the neck, and you'll get some um, unwanted results, trust me. We're going to attach the abdomen to the torso, which is this point right here. We're going, we're going to ignore the shoulder points for now, and we're going to set up the, uh, for the left elbow, we're going to set up the right shoulder. For the left hand, we're going to set up the right forearm. And in reverse, for the right elbow, we're going to set up the left shoulder. And for the right hand, we're going to set up the left forearm. For the left knee, we're going to do the right thigh. For the left foot, we're going to do the right shin. For the right knee, we'll do the left thigh. And for the right foot, we'll do the left shin. Very good. Now that we have all of our um, all of the body parts that we intend to use and all the points we intend to use, we're going to attach the body. We're going to attach the uh, point cloud. Okay. As you can see, the figure has adopted uh, the point cloud. What we can do now is we can go back to the display and uh, use the document display. We're going to select the head, and as you can see, we have a new parameter for head. It's called influence. And we're going to lower the influence of that dot. What it does is the head is pointing towards that dot. We want to lower that influence of the dot to zero because we're not going to use um, the dot to influence the head. We also want to go to the abdomen. Uh, the abdomen, yes. And we want to lower that influence a little bit. Not all the way. Maybe halfway. A little more than halfway. We want to do the same for the chest. We don't need to move the chest that much. If we play through the animation, oh, let me stop there for a second and go back to the main camera. <clears throat> now, if we play through the animation, we should see that Andy follows my motions in a pretty faithful way. Okay. And this looks pretty good to me. You saw that the, uh, the left arm just kind of went wacky once uh, the camera could no longer see the left arm. Okay. We're clapping. Okay, we're going through. All right. Now, in order to transfer this animation, in order to save it, so that we can save it, um, what I need to do now is we need to create a new uh, IK chain for the chest 
and for the for the waist, the chest, and the abdomen. As you can see, if we have uh, let's see, let's hold the arm. The left forearm actually has no transfer, no uh, twist, bend, or uh, side to side. Um, it's not changing. There's no data really there other than the original position. So we have to make sure we change that, and I'll show you how. Um, the only thing right now that has any kind of data is the body. As you can see, the body moves over the course of time, but none of the other body parts have that. And there's an easy solution to fix that. But first, we're going to add our new IK chain. So we go to the hierarchy editor. And I know a lot of us have never done this before. I know I didn't until it's now. So um, then we're going to go down to... As a matter of fact, this is a good time to stop the video. And I'll start again with, um, with video three.